All right, let's turn our attention to other stories now. Out of 600 million tons of rice cultivated around the world, Nigeria alone imports 3 million tons, while 40 million goes to the rest of Africa and the Middle East. These statistics were disclosed in Abuja by the Comptroller General of Customs, who stressed the need to protect the country's economy from the negative effects of rice smuggling. The intense pressure on foreign consumption of rice has drawn attention to various strategies now being employed to bring the commodity into the country. Since the Nigerian Customs Service declared war on smugglers, the service has had to put up with the nefarious activities of smugglers who have devised other means to bring the commodity into the country through land borders. Their hacks have had a negative impact on the nation's economy as it's struggling with its economic growth. The customs boss is advocating for the need to support local production of rice. Importation of rice into Nigeria is not banned. What we have is a restriction on the points of entry. And here we've clearly stated it that all rice that must be imported into this country must come through the seaports. Other stakeholders say if properly implemented and followed, it will reduce the amount of foreign exchange used in the importation of rice. While 80% of rice is largely cultivated in small farms in the rural areas, purchasing local rice will indirectly reduce loss of revenue through smuggling activities and also grow the milling of local rice. We have started working from the onset with all the farmers to ensure that along the full chain we maintain the quality. And so the quality that you now begin to look for, rice is very simple. It is very easy to identify. You go there and the presentation itself is enough to let you know whether this is of good quality or not. We have inadvertently adopted a culture of consuming rice without a culture of producing rice. And all that we're trying to do in government today is to enforce that culture of producing that rice that we are consuming. We want Nigerians to grow our own rice and consume it. If, as we are seeing today, as we have had the encouraging today, all these measures that are being taken to place us on the same pedestal. We are not even seeking any subsidy beyond protection provided by World Trade Organization agreements that we have entered. The benefits on offer if Nigeria attains a near self-sufficiency in rice production include job creation and reduction in the pressure on Naira exchange. All right, uh, let's dig into the issue of rice now. I know uh, uh, Busalami here likes a lot of rice. And <laughs> I do. I know the ladies can eat rice in the morning, eat rice in the afternoon, and eat rice in the evening. <laughs> they don't mind. No, we don't. Oh, you, I know, I know <laughs> you don't. All right, we're joined now by Elodjo Peters. Uh, she's an agriculture entrepreneur and is joining us on phone. Uh, she is uh, uh, the uh, managing director of uh, Elodjo Foods. Now, Eloja, good morning. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. It's very low. It's okay. And then we have from our Abuja. I'm not hearing you well. It's very low. Can you hear me now? Hello. I'm not hearing you well. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, you, you, you can see the uh, public relations officer of the Nigeria Customs Service, Wale Adeni, joining us in our Abuja studio. Wale, good morning. Can you hear me now? Hello, Wale, can you hear me? Okay, it seems the lines are uh, a little cold this morning. It's a cold <laughs> morning, so I must say. But Elodjo is supposed to join us on phone. Elodjo Peters, are you there? Okay. Oh, great. All right, Elodjo. Good, Elodjo, good, good morning. It's good to have you join us. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Now, let's go into the issue of uh, the policy, from the policy of rise. 
why is there so much emphasis on restriction or not restriction of the issue of rice? Why rice? Rice? How important is rice to this economy, if I have to put it that way? You are in the business, so talk to us. Thank you. Rice is one of the staple foods that we have in Nigeria. Rice is a delicacy in Nigeria. Rice is consumed within every level of life in Nigeria. And that, I mean, from the younger generation to the middle generation and to the older generation, rice is consumed across the board. So that explains the importance of rice, you know, to Nigeria as a country. And All right. again, you know, and again, we consume rice, but we do not grow as much as we consume. And in order to meet the demand of rice consumed in Nigeria, we begin to look at exports, I'm um, sorry, at imports. And that is what has brought us to where we are today. You know, a lot of demand on the foreign exchange, you know, and it's weakening our Naira by the day. So what we are doing now is to grow rice. Whatever we consume, we should be able to grow. All right, but are we growing enough to feed ourselves, let alone export? Uh, well, now, it is not a straight um, jacket answer. We have, over the years, you know, depended on importation. Over the years, it's not something that has started today or yesterday. Over the years, as, as long as there is Nigeria, you know, we started importing rice. So it is a problem that has been created over the years, you know. So we are trying now to correct this problem, you know. And how do we go about it? By putting strategies in place of satisfying ourselves domestically of what we eat. We are producing rice in Nigeria, yes, but not up to the quantity that we consume. All right, you know, talking all about strategy, Elio Jo, the, yes. the strategy of banning importation of rice, was it a good one for, for local producers like you? You see, if you do not ban certain things, you understand, your local industries cannot grow. If you do not take that bold step of banning certain things, no matter how important it is, your own local industries cannot grow. And therefore, you cannot employ. A, a lot of graduates are on the streets go today. And this is because we have not embraced the real thing, which is, uh, which is agriculture. Agriculture is the only industry, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that that can empower people, that employ quite a number of people is agriculture, you know. So it is, it is a step in the right direction, you know, to buy rice. Yes, it is going to be a, 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 a sacrifice that every Nigerian must do. It is difficult, I agree, 100%. I feel it. You know, but we have to do it. We have to do it now so that we can have a country called Nigeria tomorrow. Do you understand? Mm. If we don't do it now, you know, we will continue to be in a recession like this. Unemployment will, will continue to grow, you know? All and right. Then... Uh, all right. Right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast. On this segment, we are discussing the issue of rice in the country. Now, there are calls for a total and outright ban on the importation of rice. But others are saying, no, it's not the right. Just restrict the importation of rice and it will be fine. Well, there are also the arguments of the issue of um, supporting domestic producers of rice. Give them incentives. Ensure that uh, you give them land. Give them credit. And, you know, boost uh, local production and all of that. All of that are causing a mix of controversy, understanding all of this as far as the contribution 
uh, to the economy is concerned. We have uh, in, the, in our Abuja studio, Wale uh, Deni. He is the public relations officer of the Nigeria Customs. Uh, Wale, good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning, Mike. Very good. Good, good morning, morning Wally. Morning. Yeah, morning. Let, let, we also you. have uh, with us uh, uh, Elojo Peters with us on phone. But Wally, let me come to you on this. Now, we know that there has been, before now, there has been the issue of smuggling of rice into Nigeria. A lot and lot of uh, millions of tons smuggled into this country. And the last time you were on the program, we talked about this briefly as to how the customs is trying to help to ensure that whatever comes in uh, is captured so that uh, smuggling is uh, reduced. Tell us about the issue of smuggling of rice. How bad it is or how improved has it been now? Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, what we do know is that uh, thousands of metric tons of rice uh, regularly landed in uh, regularly land in Kutunu, that's the neighboring ports. And uh, we also do know that the importers of this place ultimately want to bring them to Nigeria. So what this means is that with all the ports facilities that we have in Nigeria, if you bring rice into Kutunu ports, it means what you intend to do is to smuggle them. So I agree with you, there has been very, very huge, it's very huge in terms of volume uh, uh, of rice that has been smuggled across our borders on a daily basis. And of course, our seizure reports also indicates that we are making this business a uh, bad market for them uh, because we are seizing them. The, the more they come, the more we seize. Uh, earlier, uh, in the early hours of yesterday, 13 truckloads of rice uh, were seized in various locations in Lagos. Uh, this is an ongoing process and it will continue. The more they, 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 they smuggle, the more we are going to be arresting them. So the intention of the, of the importers who patronize these neighboring ports uh, is well known. It is because they want to smuggle and, you know, circumvent the laws in Nigeria, payment of uh, uh, the duty and then the ban of rice across the land borders. Okay, we assume that you are doing a good job, but I still eat imported rice in my house. I, I don't even need to go too far to, <laughs> to, to, buy, to buy a bag. So something is wrong somewhere. Busalami, nothing is wrong. Uh, if your taste has been configured only to consume <laughs> uh, imported rice, for now, uh, you can have your indulgence because rice is actually not banned in Nigeria. So people can still bring in rice through the seaports. And when it is brought through the seaports and the, uh, the, the, the normal uh, duty is paid, 10% uh, duty and 60% surcharge, then, of course, you can have a party of uh, uh, imported rice. Uh, but, but the issue is this. If we have the capacity for local production, why do we have to waste that amount of forex on products that can be produced locally? Uh, you are from the southwest. You attend parties in the southwest. You know how much we crave uh, the local rice, the Ofada rice. You see how we design it, how we present them, how it is packaged. And research has also shown that they are actually more nutritious than what we bring in uh, uh, from Thailand and all these other places. So the issue is this. Yes, you can pay, we can have it in the market, you can, you, can, you can patronize it if you can afford it. But why are we not going to encourage those local folks who are, uh, who are producing the same thing, who can create jobs and who have opened up multiples of multiplier effect and value chains for the nigerian economy that okay. is the issue okay let's let's do a bit of some uh, some math here when the the, the the import duties for those who can still bring in bring the rice in is very high but you see how people who smuggle tons millions tons and tons of rice in through the back door not paying anything at all to the customs who 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 who, who loses at the end of the day please
It's a collective, I think it's a collective responsibility uh, for, for all as Nigerians. Uh, in the first instance, what we saw in that clip that you showed earlier is the unwholesome manner, the unhygienic manner, the unfair manner, and of course the insulting way in which smugglers have to bring in rice through the country. I saw a particular clip where, you know, they dug some uh, holes inside uh, the boot of a vehicle. Uh, we saw some where they put it inside engines, uh, under the batteries and all of that. So it's not about who loses. The issue is that should we tolerate it in Nigeria? Uh, we are also trying to change the game. The, loser, the, the, the smugglers are definitely losing because they've invested so much you know, in bringing the rice to the neighboring ports. They pay some charges and then they, they gamble their way across the border. Sometimes they do it successfully, but many times, uh, as we have seen, you know, we are meeting them force to force and we've declared a zero tolerance uh, uh, you know, against smuggling of rice. So I would say it, it, it's uh, still work in progress, but I am very sure that the smugglers are counting their losses as we speak. All right, Wale, let, let me ask you this before we go to Elojo. The, we know that they had, at a time, at a certain time, there was the waiver for the importation of rice. Other times we had rice being banned outrightly. Now, when it comes to consistency in the policy of uh, uh, policy against or policy for rice, uh, how do you think this inconsistency from government policy is uh, is affecting the the the, the smooth uh, production of rice back home and all of that? Oh, okay. We we seem to have lost the line. Yes, in the order. Mike. I oh, agree okay. with you. Go now, ahead. There is. Go ahead. There is, def there is definitely some inconsistency uh, at time you want to call it policy somersault or, or something. Uh, last year we had uh, some, uh, last year and the year before, we had some funny figures being banded around in Nigeria that uh, you and I would die if uh, rice is not imported into Nigeria. There were talks about insufficiency gap and there were talks about bridging these gaps by bringing rice uh, uh, from Thailand, from India, or from all these other places. Uh, the truth is that uh, we did not die. Uh, we had so many other alternatives to, to eat. Uh, even the rice itself has a number of local substitutes. We grow rice in Nigeria in good quantity. We have yam, we have amala, we have eba, we have cassava, we have gari. We have, you know, just name them that we can fall back to, you know. Uh, the issue actually about the inconsistency is also about the level playing ground uh, that was not created for those that were importing the rice back then, two years ago. Uh, some were given some preferential uh, rate of duty and they brought in rice at 30%, uh, while the others brought it at 70%. Uh, but there was a caveat. Even those that, that brought in rice at 30%, they were given a quota they were given a quota. They must not go beyond that quota because, you know, supposedly they were looking at a particular quantity to, to, to bridge. But what did we have? They brought in this rice uh, in excess of a quota and uh, they did not pay the, the, the uh, outstanding uh, duty, the, the balance of 40% that they ought to have paid when they brought it in excess of the quota. It was a running battle as some of you uh, knew then, but then the political environment was not, you know, supportive for Nigeria Customs Service to really enforce what we should. We thank God there is a change. We know that no such waivers exist now. We know that no such quota will come up again. We know that nobody will be issued such phony quotas again. We know that Nigerian intelligence, uh, Nigerian intelligence, will not be assaulted and will not be insulted with those kind of figures that we have insufficiency and that there is a need for a particular quota All and right. from what we heard what nigeria customs service is actually doing now working with stakeholders in uh, rice production working with local farmers working with the cbn a bank of industry and all those that are interested in nigerian economy what we are pushing for is an outright ban in the importation of rice come january 2017 and we know that if we all put our hearts together, if we all cooperate 
and you know embrace this uh, we will be able to save more than a trillion uh, naira that is saved uh, that is uh, expended on importation of rice every year and we'll be able to create jobs we'll be able to open up uh, the, the white uh, uh, value chain of rice uh, for the betterment of nigeria economy okay you're sounding so very sure but you, you were quoted on some some uh, news uh, newspapers some uh, online newspapers just a few days ago that uh, the ban on, on importation of rice through the land border has been lifted. Can you unravel that mystery, how that came about for us? That's a very, that's a very curious one. And uh, we, we are still trying to uh, unravel uh, uh, the course where this got, uh, got out. We did not reverse the ban. Uh, what happened was that in October 2015, uh, because of the circumstances then, uh, we did... Uh, Bravo that mystery, how that came about for us. That's a very, that's a very curious one, and uh, we, we are still trying to uh, unravel uh, uh, the course where this got, uh, got out. We did not reverse the ban. Uh, what happened was that in October 2015, uh, because of the circumstances then, uh, we did uh, uh, came out with a directive saying that rice uh, could be brought in through the land borders. We believed the words of the importers that they were going to play according to the game. Uh, two, three months down the line, we discovered that they did not. So the press statement that was issued then in October 2015 was what some uh, characters went and uh, resurrected in October 2016, a year after, and uh, they brought it out as if it was a fresh uh, press statement. So uh, let me make it very, very clearly. You know, that report was dated October 2015. So uh, these mischief makers only brought it out in 2016. And like we said, we know that that is their antics. They are going to fight back because the, the, the interest is selfish. The interest is uh, diabolical. The interest is against the economic interest of Nigeria, and we know that they would not uh, give up very, very easily. So we look up for such uh, more antics from them, uh, trying to twist uh, stories, try to, to, to twist news to, to suggest that uh, the importation has been banned from, uh, has been lifted through the land borders. So I let me repeat Kale. it: the ban stays through the land borders until the next three, four months when hopefully we will walk towards a complete and total ban of rice uh, into Nigeria, either through the land borders or through the seaports. All right, Wale, before I let you go, uh, I, I remember the last time you, you said there was a presidential directive on, on uh, all the smuggled rice that have been uh, either captured, as the case may be, should be sent to IDP camps as a way of assisting <laughs> in the food uh, uh, situation in there. But we also hear that some of the food or some of the relief materials sent to IDP camps are being diverted. So when you make this consideration, is it still advisable for the customs to ship into the IDP camps all the rice that have been smuggled? Well, uh, thank you very much, Mike, uh, for this question. Uh, what we do on the IDP project is not done by customs alone. Uh, we do this in conjunction and collaboration, active collaboration of other partner agencies of government, particularly the NAFDAQ. Uh, we have the NAFDAQ working with us uh, to certify that whatever rice we are taking to IDP camps uh, are fit and certified for human consumption. Uh, just yesterday, we were in Gujba uh, village in uh, Yobe, in continuation of that program, and uh, 5,000, over 5,000 bags of rice was delivered uh, in Yobe, and we had a NAFDAQ official with us to certify, we, we drew samples from what we took there to ensure that what we, what we are taking to, to, to the IDP camp is fit for human consumption. Uh, with other agencies of government, they are providing other regulatory support uh, providing security and all of that so we will not uh, try to create more problems while we are trying to solve one mm, okay all right uh, wali adini <laughs> pro nigeria custom service thank you very much for talking to us on tbc breakfast 
And we also thank uh, Elio Job Peters for joining us. Elio, we lost signal at the, at the course yeah. of our discussion with her, but it was really nice to have her on. Thank you.